Okay, so today we're really getting into it. Um, this whole idea of learning that sticks, right? Not just stuff you forget the second you walk out of the training room. Absolutely. It's about seeing a real impact on how people actually perform on the job. Yeah, exactly. And for this deep dive, we're looking at the work of Guy W. Wallace. He's this performance improvement expert who uses this really interesting analogy. He compares designing effective learning to building a skyscraper. Precisely. You wouldn't just start piling up steel and glass without a carefully designed blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. That's where Wallace's concept of curriculum architecture design or CAD comes in. Okay, so CAD, it's like the blueprint for learning. Got it. And what does this CAD tell us? Is it about like making sure you have the right courses and materials? It's more than just the materials themselves. It's about having a structured approach to learning that's tailored to the specific needs of the learner and the desired performance outcome. All right, so it's not enough to just throw information at people and hope for the best. We need a more strategic approach. Exactly. Wallace argues that effective learning, the kind that truly impacts performance, requires a carefully designed learning path. Imagine it like a roadmap guiding learners step by step towards mastery. A learning path, like a roadmap for knowledge. I like that. So how do we make sure these learning paths are actually effective? How do we know they're leading people in the right direction? That's where Wallace's mantra comes in. As flexible as feasible and as rigid as required. Okay, say more about that. What does that look like in practice? When would a learning path be more rigid and when would it need to be more flexible? Well, imagine you're training a team of surgeons on a new, highly specialized procedure. That learning path needs to be very specific, meticulously structured to ensure they master each intricate step. Right. Every detail matters in that scenario. Exactly. Now, on the other hand, if you're providing leadership development training to a diverse group of managers across different departments, the path might offer more flexibility, a general roadmap adaptable to their individual roles and challenges. So it's about tailoring the learning experience to the specific context, the desired outcome, not just the information itself. Does Wallace have any real world examples of this in action? He certainly does. Mm. In fact, one of his most compelling cases involves a project he led at Bank of America. They were struggling with really high turnover rates among their frontline tellers. Oh, wow. Yeah. High turnover is a nightmare. Costly disruptive. How did a learning path approach help tackle that problem? They actually used this CAD process to completely redesign the teller training program. What's really interesting is they didn't just focus on product knowledge. It's about more than just knowing the bank's products. Yes. So they dug deeper. They realized that to really reduce turnover, they needed to equip tellers with the practical skills and crucially the customer interaction skills to handle those day-to-day -day realities of the job. So it's about empowering tellers to feel confident and successful in their interactions with customers. I bet that made a huge difference. Absolutely. By aligning the training with the specific demands of the role, they saw remarkable results. But before we get into those, let's maybe unpack this CAD process a bit more. There's a method to the magic here. Oh. Okay, let's break it down then. What makes this approach so effective? So Wallace, he breaks it down into these phases, right? And it all starts with really understanding your target audience. So like in the Bank of America example, that would be the frontline tellers, right? Exactly. Yeah. You got to know who they are, right? What's their deal? Mm -hmm. What skills and knowledge do they already have coming in? And what are they struggling with in their roles? What are those pain points? It's like when you get a suit tailored. Yeah. You need those measurements to make sure it fits like a glove. A perfect analogy. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're tailoring that learning experience to their specific needs. Mm -hmm. And once you've got a handle on your audience, then you move on to the performance context itself. So it's not just what they need to know. It's also how they'll actually use that knowledge day to day. Right. Right. Exactly. What does success even look like in their role? What are the specific tasks, the skills, the know-how they need to really excel? And once you've painted that picture of the desired performance, mm. then you shift gears again and you start looking at the resources you've already got. This is where you see if there's anything you can reuse, right? Existing materials, training programs, that kind of thing. Absolutely. You yeah. want to be smart about it, yeah. right? Avoid reinventing the wheel if you don't have to. See if there are any internal resources materials, maybe even internal experts within the organization yeah. that you can tap into. Work smarter, not harder, as they say. Exactly. Yeah. And then finally, once you've done your due diligence with the audience, the performance goals and the existing resources, you're ready to start pinpointing those gaps. The missing pieces, the specific knowledge or skills that need to be developed to bridge that gap between where they are now and where they need to be. You got it.
And it's only then after all that analysis that you actually jump into the design phase. This is where you start building the actual learning experience. So no jumping straight into creating PowerPoint slides and handouts then? Definitely not. That upfront work, all that analysis and design, it's crucial. Even when you're short on time. Remember that cook, crank, and whale analogy Wallace talks about? Right. Even if you're whipping up a quick meal, you still need a recipe. You can't just throw random ingredients together and expect a Michelin star dish. Exactly. Taking that time to understand your ingredients, in this case, the learning objectives, the audience, the resources, it's essential if you want to create a learning experience that really hits the spot. This is all making a lot of sense. Now, we've talked about the phases of this CAD process, but what about those impressive results you mentioned earlier? What happened with Bank of America? How did this approach actually play out in the real world? So Bank of America, right? They saw some pretty amazing results with this whole CAD thing. What happened? What kind of impact did this new training have? Well, they were dealing with that high turnover with their tellers, right? And after they implemented this redesigned training program, you know, the one based on Wallace's CAD process, they actually saw that turnover rate drop a whopping 30%. 30%? That's huge. That's got to be saving them a ton of money and headaches. What do you think made the biggest difference? What was so special about this new training? It really all comes down to making the training relevant to the job, hmm. right? Giving them the tools they need to succeed in the real world. And by focusing on those practical skills and especially the customer interaction piece, it gave those tellers the confidence and know-how to handle whatever came their way. And that, of course, had a direct impact on job satisfaction and ultimately those turnover rates. So it's not just about teaching someone how to do a transaction. It's about giving them the skills to deal with people, to problem solve, to navigate those sometimes tricky interpersonal dynamics you find in a customer facing role. Exactly. You've got to remember the human element. Mm -hmm. And Bank of America's success really underscores how important that initial analysis is in the CAD process. Remember, they didn't just assume they knew what the tellers needed. They took the time to really understand the challenges of the role from the teller's perspective. Right. You can't create effective training in a bubble. You have to be grounded in the reality of the learners themselves, their needs, their challenges. So we've covered a lot of ground today. This whole idea of intentional learning designed the power of those tailored learning paths. It's been a fascinating deep dive. What would you say is the most important thing for our listeners to take away from all of this? You know, I think it's this learning isn't passive. It's not just about absorbing information. It's about actively transforming yourself, closing that gap between what you know and what you can actually do. It's about always pushing yourself to learn, to grow, to become more and more skillful in everything you do. I love that. It's about taking ownership of your learning journey. And on that note, I think we've reached the end of our deep dive <laughs> for now anyway. But keep those learning paths aligned, everyone, and we'll see you on the next deep dive. Mm -hmm.